I'm glad to um, introduce our speaker, Professor Katrina G. Engay Gutierrez, a forester and environmental planner. And uh, she is a faculty of the, at the Forestry and Environmental Science Department, College of Agriculture at Southern Luzon State University, uh, where she has led research extension and production projects, which focus on clonal propagation technology for the conservation of threatened native forest trees. Her other works um, in, has enabled her to publish scientific papers on clonal forestry, environmental planning and management, the application of GIS, disaster re recovery and reconstruction, watershed and agroforestry systems, and bioenergy. She is currently pursuing her PhD by research in environmental science at UP Los Baños, where she also received her undergraduate degrees in 2006 and master's degree in 2011. Friends, let us all welcome Professor Katrina Engay Gutierrez. Hi, Mom. Hi, good afternoon. I'll just uh, share my screen. All right, Pop. All right, so again, uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat and uh, natutuwa po ako at marami po tayo ngayon for this uh, uh, topic. Uh, marami tayong uh, mga attendees uh, on this topic. So I'm very pleased uh, to present to you the uh, clonal forestry and uh, production of quality planting material for sustainable forest management uh, in this webinar series of uh, UPLB Museum of Natural History. Uh, I am very happy that uh, I can share with you this afternoon uh, the initiatives of uh, Southern Luzon State University. So for the outline of my presentation, uh, we will talk about uh, clonal propagation using stemmed cuttings and the production of quality planting materials, or we often uh, say it as PQPM, okay? And uh, to give you an overview of why we are doing this uh, clonal propagation and why uh, we are engaged in the production of quality planting materials, uh, this is uh, due to Executive Order Number 26, Series of 2011, or the National Greening Program. And this Section 2 of EO 26 states that we need to plant some 1.5 billion trees covering about uh, 1.5 million hectares for a period of six years. And that starts from 2011 to 2016. So this is uh, tree planting in the lands of the public domain. And then uh, we have also executive order number 193 series of 2015, which is the expanded um, National Greening Program or the ENGP. So SLSU was one of the recipients of the 3.5 million uh, pesos from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources uh, to establish clonal nursery and at the same time produce and deliver 60,000 seedlings in various uh, national greening or uh, program or NGP sites. And um, the EO 193 uh, encourages okay, greater participation now from local institutions and organizations. And for the research portion of clonal propagation, uh, we are in it is in cognizance with the harmonized national R&D agenda 2017-2022. So the research of SLSU could contribute to the development uh, and the sustainable management of uh, ITPs or industrial tree plantations development of protocols for the production of quality planting materials and sustainable cultural management techniques. So what is clonal propagation? This involves the utilization of the vegetative portion of plants in producing true to type plants. So we are using in this case in SLSU, we are using the uh, shoot tips or the stem cuttings. So it is used to produce high quality planting materials 
from outstanding or recommended mother trees. This is according to uh, ERDB in 2012. And uh, I would like to um, recognize that the macro propagation uh, using rooted stem cuttings was successfully attained by ERDB for uh, dipterocarp species and other indigenous species. And uh, we at SLSU, uh, we were one of the SUCs who were uh, trained by ERDB on this uh, clonal propagation technology. And we started this in 2012. All right. So in vegetative propagation, these are the, I summarize it in six steps. So for number one, we have to select the mother trees or plus trees, okay? Second is from the seedlings or wildlings of mother trees, uh, there is a need to establish a hedge garden or the ramet garden as they say. Uh, this hedge garden will be the source of uh, our stem cuttings. And then when the, the hedge garden has been established, there is a need to uh, wait for at least one year or more before you can collect the stem cuttings. And then uh, the fourth part, fourth step or procedure is the application of rooting hormone. So why do we need to apply rooting hormone? Because this hastens okay, uh, rooting or root formation from stem cuttings. And then fifth is uh, planting in rooting chambers or in rooting beds. But I will show you later um, that there is another, uh, there are two propagation systems that we can use in, uh, in rooting uh, stem cuttings. And sixth is uh, transplanting the rooted cuttings and then we allow them for recovery. And then we harden the clones until they are able for or ready for outplanting. So before we go into detail of the procedure of clonal propagation, uh, allow me to define first what is quality planting material. So according to Caffrey E. Craft in 2019, quality planting materials or the production of quality planting materials is the production of uniform, healthy, disease-free planting material raised through seed or vegetative methods with an overall goal to raise the physiological and phytosanitary quality of the plant available to stakeholders to increase the productivity. So um, ERDB uh, equated uh, NGP to PQPM. So having national greening program, uh, they tried to really promote that the planting materials that we should use should be of good quality, okay? So we will now go to the step-by-step -step procedure and how SLSU was able to um, do some uh, research and uh, some, and at the same time, a sideline with production and uh, later on uh, extension education on the on clonal propagation. So as I've said a while ago, we start with plus or mother tree selection. So we graded them from six to one, okay? And then this is based on DAO 2010-11. So DAO 2010-11 is the revised regulations uh, governing forestry seed and seedling production collection and disposition. So this is a guide uh, in the assessment uh, where trees are being ass assessed in nine criteria. So we have stem straightness, uh, stem forking, branch angle, stem circularity, branch thickness, tree health, uh, branch pruning, diameter, and height. So um, this is done in order to uh, really select okay, the trees that have phenotypic characteristics. So this is uh, the one that you can download in the internet, as I have mentioned a while ago. So it shows here some of the guide in which the highest grade is six, 
and the lowest grade is one. And with that, uh, we were able to uh, identify some plus trees, uh, mother trees in Mount Banaho de Lucban, and at the same time uh, in the areas or vicinities of uh, Lucban, Quezon, and um, some parts of uh, Quezon province. Okay. Is it showing? No. I'm sorry. Okay. So we did this in 2017. Uh, the plus trees, uh, plus tree selection. So we were able to uh, identify 22 species of plus or mother trees with uh, 61 individuals. Uh, representing 13 families in Mount Banaho de Lucban. So they were identified uh, at 700, 800 to 900 MASL, and most of them are, uh, they have good phenotypic characteristics. Okay. And then we were also able to uh, find four species, uh, 20 individuals uh, representing three families in uh, Lucban vicinities. And they also have good phenotypic characteristics. Uh, as for the higher elevations of the mountain, um, like from 1,000 to 1,800 MASL, uh, they have uh, fair uh, phenotypic characteristics. So allow me to show you uh, some of the trees that we have selected. So this is uh, Gongrospermum filipinense, if you are familiar with kasaw-kasaw. So uh, lahat po nung nine, nung, uh, no, actually six kasi we just measured the other, the height and then the diameter class. So for stem straightness, forking, circularity, angle, thickness, pruning, and tree health, uh, all of it, all of it is uh, good, okay? And then we also have sample here is kamuling, uh, micrococcus stylocarpa. So ganun then good. I'm sorry, kasaw is good in terms of stem straightness, forking is fair, uh, circularity is good, and all other characteristics is fair. So ganun po namin siya uh, ginawa. Okay. And then uh, one of my uh, research advice was also able to uh, identify 15 mother trees in uh, the third district of Quezon province. So this is in uh, the Quezon protected landscape in Padre Burgos, in Benavista protected landscape in Mulanay, and in the Mulanay watershed forest reserve in San Francisco. So that was in 2019. So she was also able to geotag them. Next is on the establishment of the hedge garden. So how do we establish the hedge garden? So the seedlings or wildlings that uh, were collected from these plus trees or mother trees uh, are planted okay, in 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter distance. Okay? So they are called as stock plants because they will be uh, our sources of uh, juvenile or stem cuttings for PQPM. So at the SLS Clonal Forestry uh, Nursery, we have more than 2,000 stock, stock plants at present. And the species are white nawaan, makaasim, molave, yakal kaliot, batikuling, kalumpit, almasiga, banahaw igem, agoho, mindanao narig, yakal saplungan, Malakmalak, Palusapis, uh, Bagtikan, Malabayabas, Giho, Yakal, Toog, and Malabula. Okay. So the third uh, procedure is the collection of lignified cuttings. So the shoot tips are the portions that are fast growing 
uh, the shoot tips are used for fast growing and uh, other indigenous species, while uh, the two nodal cuttings uh, are used for, are done for dipterocarps, okay? But uh, usually we do two to three uh, nodal cuttings uh, below the shoot tip, okay? With a slanting cut. So once you collect the stem cuttings, you need to uh, put them in water so that uh, you prevent the transpiration loss of the cuttings while you are collecting uh, them. So these semi-hardwood cuttings are uh, propagated when the stems are partly or but not uh, fully mature. So other activities um, after collection of stem cuttings is you need to trim the leaves into half of their original size. So that is another um, activity that we need to do to prevent transpiration. And then after that, we soak the cuttings in 200 ppm fungicide solution for one hour, okay? That is to remove the impurities and uh, free it from uh, other, from dirt or from infections, okay? The fourth procedure is the application of rooting hormone. So the rooting hormones that we use for uh, the stem cuttings are indolbutyric acid or IBA and alpha naphthalene acetic acid or NAA. So the concentration of the rooting hormone vary per uh, species. So in this figure, I'm showing you the Routing protocol for some priority species that uh, was developed by ERDB in 2010. They have this uh, published in their guidebook. So for Almasiga, uh, the routing hormone is IBA, the concentration is 300 ppm, and then the routing media is river sun plus cococuar dust. Uh, while for Apitong, which is a dipterocarp species, uh, the routing hormone is IBA. And then the concentration of the hormone is 1,000 ppm. And then you also use the same rooting media as almasiga. Uh, in the case of bagdikan, if you see, uh, there is no rooting hormone uh, applied for it. Ibig pong sabihin ay pwede pong siyang tumubo, yung cuttings ay pwede siyang tumubo at magkaugat na kahit po hindi natin siya lalagyan ng rooting hormone. Uh, in the case of batikuling, it is also IBA. So the concentration is much lower as compared to the above mentioned. And then Molave, uh, dito naman iba. Uh, they use or alpha naphthalene acetic acid in 100 ppm. And then the rooting media is pure fine river, river sand. For Palusapis, White Lawaan, uh, same IBA. And then nagvavari lang po doon sa concentration ng rooting hormone. Okay. So when the, when the uh, stem cuttings have rooted, uh, or up, uh, sorry, after applying pala the rooting hormone, you need to plant it na. So the fifth procedure is planting. And there are two types of uh, propagation system that uh, we can use. One is the mist propagation system. So this is a mechanical spraying of water. So there is a desired frequency and duration of watering and the rooting, uh, the stem cuttings are uh, planted in rooting beds or chambers. For the non mist uh, propagation system, this is manual spraying of water or with the aid of a hand sprayer and the stem cuttings are planted in uh, poly bags. So yung typical po na misting frequency uh, during sticking or yung stage one na sinasabi natin at saka uh, during calusing or yung stage two of um, vegetative propagation is initially we miss them for five to eight seconds every uh, five to ten uh, minutes, okay, over a 24-hour period. Pero siyempre po, uh, that will depend on the weather, okay? And then uh, after the three to four days, uh, we reduce the mist again to three to five seconds every 10 to 20 minutes uh, during the day and 
less or there is no watering at night. So uh, the routing media that we often use at SLSU uh, clonal nursery is uh, one is to one ratio of coco choir dust and uh, river sand. And the rooting media are sterilized before uh, we do the planting of these uh, stem cuttings. So when the stem cuttings have rooted, uh, paano ba natin malalaman kung yung cuttings natin ay meron na po siyang ugat? So one basis is uh, yung paglabas po ng new shoot or new leaves. Okay? So or um, kung wala naman pong new shoots or new leaves, ang uh, gagawin po natin is we try to move uh, slightly po yung, mga, yung ating stem cuttings. Kapag ka medyo mabigat or lumalaban po siya, ibig sabihin may ugat na po yun. So uh, the rooted stem cuttings are transplanted in polybags and placed in the recovery area. So once na recovered na din po sila in three months, uh, we can uh, let them out, lalagay na natin sa hardening of beds uh, in time for field planting. So uh, gusto ko lang pong sabihin din na uh, during transplanting, we uh, add a biofertilizer okay, with the garden soil kung saan po tinatransplant yung uh, rooted stem cutting. So uh, we apply uh, mycorrhiza. So, 5 grams per bag. So, pwede pong Hikivam 1 that is uh, developed by DNR ERDB or Mycovam uh, which is developed by UPLB Biotech. So, ano po yung uh, naging pag-aaral namin? So, we had uh, a research on uh, the production of uh, batikuning or let's say latencies. Okay? And uh, we are grateful that uh, Picard DOST was able to fund us to do this kind of uh, activity. So here um, in the ANOVA table, you can see that uh, the alpha naphthalene rooting hormone and the mycorrhiza inoculant has an effect on the average length of roots of batikuling stem cuttings, specifically uh, this portion in which the amount of mycorrhiza and NAA or the level of concentration of NAA. In the DMRT, okay, makikita po natin yung control at saka yung 200 ppm. Okay, may diferensya ano po. And 100 ppm at saka 200 ppm po ng alpha uh, naphthalene acetic acid. So, um, the rooted stem cuttings uh, started to form callus and the roots were observed at the 10th week of uh, propagation. So uh, the results of the study showed uh, significant differences in the means of treatments in terms of their survival rate and at the same time on their average length of roots. So that is in table three and uh, table two and three. You can also download this uh, publication in the internet. So I have placed here the URL or the website where you can uh, find it. So we tried to compare it with IBA. Kanina NAA, ngayon naman ay IBA. So ganun din po. Ayan. So yung concentration level ng IBA at saka yung klase po ng mycorrhiza. So may tamang matching po kami. Uh, may tamang matching po dapat yung uh, concentration level ng IBA at saka ng klase ng mycorrhiza na gagamitin. So, dito po sa DMRT, uh, makukompare natin yung control at saka yung 100 ppm. So, meaning to say that the rooting hormone has uh, an influence on the uh, root formation of the stem cuttings of batikuling. Um, however, I cannot tell you all the details about this because uh, we have an ongoing uh, intellectual property rights application po, and we are being assisted by DOST TAPI for this uh, particular uh, portion. Okay. Uh, we also had uh, some studies on propagating almasiga, uh, banahaw igem, igem pugot, uh, kalumpit. Kasaw-kasaw, makaasim, and 
Toog and uh, my students are very uh, good in doing their undergrad research on this uh, three species that uh, made them graduate from SLSU and landed them uh, jobs in DNR and other government agencies. So I'm proud to say. <laughs> All right. So because of these um, activities, uh, we were able to uh, cope up with the demands of uh, planting materials uh, posed to us by DNR because we have uh, we had a lot of memorandum of agreement with them since 2013 to 2018. And uh, we were able to deliver all the seedlings, the clones at the same time, uh, seedlings and uh, wildlings in Quezon, in Laguna, in Batangas, uh, some parts of Pangasinan, Bataan, uh, in, Fort, in Fort Magsaysay, in Nueva Ecija. Uh, we also had uh, deliveries in Tarlac, in Pampanga, and some in Quezon City. So uh, apart from uh, the propagation activity, uh, we also developed and published information materials for extension education. Uh, this is to uh, bring awareness to our visitors, especially po kapag uh, meron po mga students or there are some uh, private entities who would like to buy seedlings. We do not just uh, let them buy and then they go. No, uh, we try to educate them about how clonal propagation is and how are we going to produce quality planting materials para po hindi tayo dependent doon sa uh, seasonal availability ng seeds o di kaya ay ubusin natin yung mga wildlings na meron po tayo doon sa ating mga protected areas. Okay? So, what are the other initiatives that uh, we are doing uh, ways forward in which uh, we would like to be funded sana on, on this uh, part, like field uh, trials and monitoring of outplanted clones in Laguna and Quezon, uh, tissue culture of our native tree species. Uh, this is macro propagation using explants. And then, uh, ito po yung medyo mabigat bigat the uh, DNA barcoding. So the optimization for the uh, PCR condition uh, for the amplification of the RBCL gene. Um, so, i-share ko lang na sa mga outplanted clones namin, isa pa lang po yung amin nagagawa or monitor, and this is uh, the NGP site in Pagbilaw. So, we tried to check po yung uh, clones that were outplanted like Makaasi, Molave, and White Lawaan. However, um, it has low survival rate, maybe because uh, kulang din siguro dun sa portion na, na maintain po siya. And then, uh, halos yung diameter increment nila is hindi ganun din ka, kataas. And, but then, uh, very uh, remarkable din po yung mean height increment. So, Extremes naman po siya from 17 to 79 uh, centimeters. But then, uh, itong mga outplanted clones na to happened po in 2014. And then that is only like uh, four or three to four years na siya po ay imminonitor. And then we also attempted to uh, do... Um, micropropagation. So the micropropagation focus lang po dun on the preliminary uh, uh, studies on the Murashige and Skug medium. So yun lang po yung ginamit namin. And we tried to uh, do tissue culture for Almasiga and then sa Batikuling. So that was in 2015. And then we had uh, we were able to receive funding from PTFCF uh, to do it in 2017. But then uh, we are unsuccessful on this portion, um, maybe because uh, we were not able yet to uh, really establish the uh, protocol for tissue culture at saka uh, the facility is not really uh, suited for three species because uh, our tissue culture laboratory is for banana and coconut, intended for banana and coconut during that time. So we would like to 
uh, do more on this uh, portion so that kahit po kakaunting uh, or isang piraso lang ng explant, explant can multiply uh, a lot for uh, seedling production, di ba? So the third is on DNA barcoding. Uh, this is funded also by Picard and uh, we were assisted by the College of Forestry and Natural Resources, uh, specifically po yung Department of uh, Forest Biological Sciences. So we did the molecular characterization uh, to optimize the PCR conditions for DNA barcoding of Litseya, Batikuling, and Makaasin, Sizigium nitidum. Um, this was in 2018 to 2020. 19. Okay, so it was conducted to optimize the PCR conditions and then uh, yung mga plant tissues po ng species were collected in uh, Laguna and Quezon and DNA extraction was performed using the cetyl uh, ammonium bromide or the CTAB method. So uh, the PCR conditions for amplifying the RBCL region in both species were attained uh, by adjusting the number of cycles and the annealing temperature and the generation of the DNA sequences for DNA barcoding was attained. So in Makaasim po, in Sisigium Tidum, the average length of uh, relatively good uh, sequences uh, generated using the Sanger method is 600 BP. Uh, in the case naman po of Batikuling, uh, in the case of Litsaya latensis, uh, from like 600 to 800 BP. Uh, overall, uh, there was no significant uh, sequence variation po that was detected uh, for all the individuals of Makaasim and uh, Batikuling in Laguna and Quezon. And this uh, confirmed high uh, genetic similarities within species. So, bakit po ito mahalaga, yung DNA barcoding? So, this uh, would lessen the chance to propagate misidentified Batikuling and uh, Maka Makaasim trees. And it also offers robust taxonomic identification of the species. Um, I'm also uh, happy to share with you that uh, we are assisting really the students uh, and we are hoping to engage more students in clonal forestry. So the facility actually caters to thesis and the practicum or OJT of our students, especially po yung aming SLSU Laboratory High School. And uh, there was also a time that uh, the students of Benguet State University had their uh, practicum or did their practicum with us. And the facility is not only for production, as I mentioned, it is a research not only for faculty like me, uh, but also for our uh, students who are very much uh, interested in this uh, endeavor. And aside from uh, the youth, okay, uh, we also have VIPs who come in and out in our uh, facility. So as an income generating project of the university, uh, we are very, very glad uh, that we provide quality planting materials to several recipients, uh, individuals, okay, that enabled and sustained the facility to operate on a regular basis plus uh, the employment po of our nursery staff and research assistants. So we have here uh, some members of the board. Uh, we have the co-author of uh, Philippine Native Trees 101, 202, and 303. Uh, we have uh, Green Convergence, uh, the governor of uh, Tarlac, Governor Yap, and then there are a lot of uh, people from the PNTE, yung Philippine Native Tree Enthusiasts, you should uh, be a member of that. They have an FB page. And then our regular client uh, for their CSR, for their corporate social responsibility, is the San Benaventura Power Limited uh, Corporation. We have Team Energy also. And we have uh, the Philippine Center for Environmental Protection and Sustainable 
Development and the Philippine Native Plants uh, Conservation Conservation Society uh, Incorporated. And uh, this is uh, Dr. Jurgen Primavera in picture four, if you can see uh, her there. So, nakakatawa po at napakaraming uh, bumibisita at bumibili ng seedlings sa amin. Uh, but one of the most notable accomplishment of uh, the research that we are doing, the R&D on clonal propagation, is um, the transfer po of propagation techniques to the local government unit of Paite Laguna. And uh, as you know, uh, Paite is the carving capital of the Philippines. So at present, they have now, we assisted them with the establishment of the two hectare demo farm. And then they have, uh, in picture three, they already have a non mist uh, clonal nursery. They were able to adapt the propagation technique that uh, we uh, trained them. And then uh, they also have, at present, I think they are developing the artist village in the upland as an agro-ecotourism site. So napakaganda po kasi dumadami na yung kanilang batikuling doon. And they have targeted these three sitios in Gumihan, Palainin, and Papatahan. And uh, for our um, SEPA, for our communication, education, and public awareness, uh, we partnered with the Papatahan Integrated High School in uh, Sitio Papatahan for the students to be aware on how to Propag uh, not only to propagate the, the species, but then for them to be able to really um, identify, be familiar with the three species. Because uh, when I interviewed some of the wood carvers in Paite, they told me that they are only familiar with the wood, but they do not really uh, know what the tree look like or ano po yung itsura ng puno, ano itsura ng kanyang bulaklak, ano itsura po ng kanyang dahon. So, uh, nakakatawa lang na siya ay kilala nila sa kahoy pero hindi nila kilala yung punong kahoy mismo. O, ano po. So, eto po siya. That is batikuling or uh, they call it locally as bitokling. Uh, the batikuling wood is the raw material for wood carving uh, statues and architectural embellishments that are not know, uh, known uh, in the Philippines and also uh, in other countries. So, kaso po ang problema natin nga, uh, that's why we are doing clonal propagation because like batikuling, it is already one of uh, the vulnerable Philippine uh, three species, yan po ay based doon sa updated list of uh, threatened species po ng DNR. So, kailangan po natin siyang paramihin kasi hindi po natin mahihintay yung 20, 30 years para po siya ay mamunga para po magkaroon tayo ulit ng planting materials. Hindi po ba? So, uh, yan po yung isa sa uh, mga species po na ginagamit ng paite for their wood carving. So, Sabi nga po nung kanilang mayor in uh, dapat daw ay the people must uh, learn how to plant or how to replace the trees that are cut for wood carving with the hope of uh, preventing the ecological and social uh, tragedy that is posed by their industry. So ito po yung mga students of papatahan uh, integrated high school. We also uh, had a training with some of the parents, uh, forest rangers po, and also the teachers of Papatahan. Uh, in conclusion, um, developing alternatives and simplifying operations are needed to recover the degraded and deforested lands in our country. And Clonal forestry to, through uh, production of quality planting materials uh, for native tree species, uh, kailangan na kailangan po siya, especially po dun sa mga rare and threatened uh, trees po natin. So we can ensure that our native trees uh, still uh, be part of our biodiversity. 
as form of uh, sustainable for forest management. And we also recognize the role of uh, local, local communities as towards of our vulnerable ecosystem. So with that po, maraming salamat. And uh, this is our trademark, the SLSU Clonal Forestry. Thank you very much for your time uh, in listening. And I am very much uh, open for your uh, comments or if you have some questions and I'm very willing to answer them. Okay, these are the references that were used in this presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, um, before we proceed with the open forum, meron po ba tayong, let's, let's check yung ating uh, chat. So yun nga po, uh, please go on to the chat box and then pwede kayo maglagay ng inyong questions there. So uh, ang ating um, open forum is already open. Let us see. So let me just scroll down. Okay, we have one question from Aldrich Joshua Reyes. Um, his question is, how effective does clonal propagation uh, is in combating the declining number of tree species and how does it affect the genetic diversity of the said uh, tree species, especially siguro yung mga minention nyo? What precise or specific biosecurity measures um, are you employing to avoid the spread of diseases dun sa inyong propagation areas? Medyo marami po yung tanong. Ano Oo, sa... marami nga eh. Pati <laughs> tayo ni. Eh. Isa-isa lang. Sige lang, go, lang. go. Opo. Uh, doon po sa uh, quality po ng planting materials natin and to ensure po yung sinasabi nating diversity, we always follow po the DAO 2010-11 DAO guidelines and we do not only uh, rely on just one tree. Okay? That's why we are doing assessments and selection of plus trees in various areas so that uh, we do not confine the propagation of uh, stem cuttings only in one or few uh, individuals of that uh, particular species. Uh, in terms of biosecurity, uh, we we always uh, ask the permission of uh, PAMBI, and at the same time, uh, we also ensure that the uh, the ta taxonomic identification really is correct. Okay, before we can uh, propagate or mass propagate them. Ayun po. Mm -hmm. Meron po ba akong hindi na hit doon sa question, sir? Uh, biosecurity measures, ma'am. Very specific or price, uh, precise biosecurity measures. No? Um, uh -huh. Do you employ some, some mga, mga, mga procedures? No? Like um, may, may mga sa clonal propagation facility nyo ba? Meron kayo mga foot bath? Mga, yes, yes. Mga ganun, no? okay. Yes. Right. Uh, we, from the start of the collection of stem cuttings uh, doon, Nag-sanitize uh, na kami, nag-sterilize, hanggang sa pati po yung mga routing media, naka-sterilize din po siya. So pati po yung aming mga staff, they wear uh, appropriate uh, protective uh, ano din, uh, PPEs, uh, like no? gloves, yeah, opo. at saka nung hindi pa po uso ang face mask, naka-face mask na po kami at saka <laughs> naka-gloves in uh, producing these uh, planting materials, yun po. So, paano yung staff nyo, ma'am? May mga stay-in? Hindi sila pwedeng, you know, palabas-labas, something like that? Ah, yes. They they really work very hard uh, during the day. They they come in 7 a.m. or as early as before 7. And they leave uh, as late as late 5 or mag-6 p.m. na po siya. And they also work uh, not only from Monday to Friday, but they have to stay Monday to Saturday po. Mm -hmm. Sunday mm -hmm. lang po ang break. Ah, okay. Doon lang sila sa <laughs> facility. Hindi sila lumalabas. Uh, they, they can also go out. Opo. Okay. So, acknowledge ko lang yung aming mga staff. Baka nandito sila nanonood ngayon. O, oh, baka okay. naman. <laughs> thank you. Thank you okay. po sa inyong hard right. work. Sa so, uh, next question natin comes from uh, Sophia Alayra. Sophia Sophie. Uh, batikuling. Tree is used for uh, wood carving, handicraft in uh, paete. Uh, will your project help ensure or can your project ensure the sustainability of the supply of this um, batikuling wood 
there are many information that uh, may mga information daw that some wood carvers or wood crafters in Paete have shifted to other livelihood activities due to the decline in production of uh, batikling. Uh, yes, po. that is why uh, when the mayor of Paete approached us and uh, asked our assistance in the propagation of the species because he see that uh, if we are not, if they are not going to act now, eh, pa. Mm -hmm. So uh, he encouraged uh, the people, especially po yung may mga lots doon sa upland, to plant uh, this uh, species doon sa kanilang private areas. And then, uh, kasi meron din pong nagsishift na aside from batikuling, they also shift to langka and other three species na eh. And uh, they source their wood from other uh, parts of yung nearby municipalities or sometimes in Bicol. Mm -hmm. So, yun po yung gusto namin sanang i-address na, na as early as now, they try to uh, plant the species para po hindi rin po sila ma-restrict in the future to harvest it for their wood carving. Kasi ngayon po, we have uh, executive order yung dati pa na lagban, yung moratorium po natin sa lagban, hindi pa, po, pa rin po sila pinapayagan na manguha ng uh, kahoy mula po sa ating mga uh, protected areas. So, mas maganda, sila na ang magtanim. Magtanim po sila ng mga puno mm. and in the future, uh, ipa-certify po nila or ipa-register po sa DNR and there, they can harvest what they have planted. So um, we are doing monitoring now with the outplanted clones. Uh, mabilis po silang lumaki. Uh, sa case po lang ng makaasim muna, ha? hindi ko pa kasi po na-observe yung batikulin. In the case of makaasim po, we observe that the clones of makaasim flower as early as 3 to 5 years old. So napakaganda pong uh, sign yon, kasi we can collect the seeds and we can plant them right away. So hindi naman po tayo relying lang doon sa uh, clonal propagation basta dapat uh, ma-ensure natin na available yung magiging source natin ng planting materials for uh, ITP or industrial tree plantation. Okay. So from uh, Carl Arman Kabantak, um, the question is um, have, have there been instances for of occurrence of plant diseases or infections or infections that uh, affected the trees propagated through clonal propagation? If so, what what methods are being applied to reduce uh, such situations? Uh, we often encounter those kind of uh, insect pests. Uh, very rare po yung disease kasi mm -hmm. from the plus tree selection po, we already omitted that portion. Dapat uh, wala pong sakit yung nanay, yung mother tree or yung plus tree na kukuhanan po natin ng uh, uh, stock plant for hedge garden. So, um, usually insect pest po kasi normal naman po yun sa nursery. Uh, marami dyan mga sumisip-sip, mga, ano, mga insekto. Uh, natural ano lang din, uh, control. Uh, sometimes we just spray yung mga and tao dito liquid uh, soap with water ganun tapos sometimes we manual pick them or we separate them right mm -hmm. away na. so yun po yun yung usual uh, in the outplanted uh, there have been reports from the outplanted clones na doon po sa uh, paite na meron pong mga trees na nagkakaroon po siya ng sakit hindi po dahil uh, inherent yung sakit or nasa sa kanya na, nasa mismong halaman, ito po ay dahil naman doon sa environment kung nasaan siya. So nakuha po yung sakit doon sa mga karatig. Uh, dati po, we were also, uh, we were affected by the cochlea sap dito po sa Quezon. Quezon. Yung mga siblings po namin is naapektuhan din po siya. So uh, sometimes the environment, uh, yeah, the environment is really a factor for a disease or best to occur. Hmm. Especially kung hindi siguro napansin na, you know, when, kung kailan i, ililipat na eh, meron pa lang. Okay. So kailan din natin may, may some sort of biosurveillance din, no? Yes. Sa mga target areas, tapos saan siya dadalhin yung mga clo, uh, clonally propagated na mga trees. Yes. And um, siguro ibalik ko lang yung may follow-up question si, si Carl. Given that cloning is a part of you know, modern science, can we uh, can he ask if there's are issues on the genetic diversity of the trees that are 
propagated through cloning. Pero na ba kayo nakita ng some sort of ano ba? Degradation ng ng kanyang genetic uh, material. Si meron ba tayong very... meron ba tayong mga studies on that? Oo, very ano pa lang kasi yung ano namin, study namin dito sa dalawang species, ano po yung partnership namin with the, the College of Forestry sa UPLB. Uh, wala naman po. So, okay pa naman siya. I just don't know if uh, dun sa ibang studies po ni Dr. Maldia, uh, meron po silang nakita. Pero in the case of the two species that uh, we studied, wala naman po. All right. So, let's switch to, let's shift to Bernardo Camano. Uh, sabi niya, hi, Ma'am Kat, how to prevent fungus attack on the cuttings planted uh, in the rooting medium? Uh, you have to sterilize the media talaga mm -hmm. so that you you prevent the the infection of fungus mm -hmm. kasi kung hindi po siya na sterilize most likely talaga aatakehin po yan ng fungus, fungus. opo all right so ito may tanong si Giovanni Sudara ah, na ikliling tanong niya kailangan po bang diligan ang nasa non mist so ano yung may plots kayo misted and non mist tapos Didiligan mo. Yung ba yung, I think yun yata yung question niya. Ah, so, yes. Uh, Pakiklarify okay. na lang yun. <laughs> so, sa misting po, di ba sabi po natin kanina is mechanical po siya. So, naka-oras, may duration hmm. po. Sa non-mist, di ba naka-confine po siya. Tapos, uh, nakatanim po sila sa mga polybags. Opo, dinidiligan din po natin <laughs> sila. Pero, hindi po dapat ganun kadalas nakatulad po ng misting kasi po iba po yung sa hand sprayer and ang um, ang isang natutunan ko po kay Dr. Cadiz uh, at saka kay Dr. Nuevo they are from ERDB mga retired na po ito pagpag method ano po yung pagpag, -pag, -pag. method yung pawis po doon sa mismong uh, close na non mist chamber papagpagan niyo lang po para po malaglag po yung yung dew or yung moist niya yun po yung magse-serve po na tubig niya kung ah, ang panahon okay. naman po ay hindi sobrang init. Oo. But then kapag ka uh, mainit po yung panahon, kailangan po talaga uh, diligan in uh, medyo bubuksan po natin yung non-mist chamber. Uh, palalabasin po natin yung init doon po sa loob. Hmm. Yan po. Okay. So a question from Jennifer Nye. Uh, okay, with clonal propagation producing a genetically identical offsprings uh, yun nga, there's a risk of a higher rate of disease transmission. What steps can you take to mitigate this problem with this kind of propagation? I think marami na naman kayo nabanggit kanina, pero mm -hmm. probably you could uh, cite uh, other, other, other procedures, uh -huh. other yes. steps that you are using. Opo. Uh, for dun sa mga outplants naman na, Kasi sa nursery, we can control it by some other control methods. Ano, can be chemical or mm -hmm. uh, organic. Pag sa outplanting, we are uh, really trying to see na dapat mas maganda siguro kung hindi monoculture. Uh, we integrate it with other three species then. Uh, that is why um, I am also asking the locals, uh, paano ba tumutubo or saan nyo po natin nakikitang tumutubo ang, uh, for example, yung batikuling, ano ang mga kasama niyang mga puno? Ganun po. Uh, we are trying to establish that kind of uh, information so that uh, we would be able to integrate it with other three species para hindi siya lang at siya lang yung nandoon sa, kasi most likely magkakaroon nga po talaga yun ng, ano, ng sakit. Ganun din po. Kahit, hindi, kahit siya ay native. Mm. Okay. So ngayon, I think ang paite, Laguna is in-integrate na din siya sa ibang agricultural crops. Tinatry po nila. Hmm. Okay. Uh, from Emmanuel Alfred Villamin, uh, question niya, yung pinresend niyo po bang propagation technique, would it be applicable to all native trees? Uh, is uh, citing especially salinggogon. Salinggogon trees. Ah, yeah. Yes. Salinggogon. Very beautiful tree. At saka napakaganda po ng kanyang bulaklak. Yes po, we can do it in uh, our native tree species. But not. I'm not saying that we do it in all of our native trees. Why? Because uh, we have uh, three species that are prolific cedar. 
Ibig pong sabihin, sila po ay magaling magbigay ng mga buto, ng bunga, katulad po ng nara. Hindi po natin kailangan i-stem cuttings pa yan kasi siya naman po ay uh, nakakapagbigay po ng acid sa atin. ba diba? Sobrang dami niya po mag magbigay ng seed. So in that okay. case, hindi na po kailangan. So ang kailangan po, ipropagate natin yung mga three species natin na may problema sa kanilang uh, seed uh, germination. Uh -huh. Katulad po ng mga dipterocarps, yan. Sila po ay mga recalcitrant. Katulad din ng batikuling na sinasabi ko kanina, yung pag nalaglag na po yung bunga niya, dun sa lupa, wala na. Nabubulok na din po agad. Usually, nung time na nakapag-collect po kami ng mga seeds nitong ating mga three species, ang baba po ng germination rate, nasa 20% lang. So isipin niyo po yun kung sa 120 lang yung tumubo, sayang hindi ba? So yun yung mga kailangan nating i-propagate or i-clone. Uh, meron din kasi tayong mga three species na napakatagal din pong mamulaklak, mamunga. It takes uh, 20, 15, 30 years bago po sila maging productive. Kumbaga yung productive years po nila. So dun po tayo papasok sa cloning or clonal propagation or using stem cuttings. Thank you. So itong uh, tanong next uh, question ni Carl, I think siguro i rephrase ko na lang since yes, um, na, nabalikan na naman natin yung mga tanong na ito. Pero siguro, um, maybe you've heard of uh, other studies or researchers yes. uh, on the use of clonal propagation to other trees. So yes. aside from one, yung mga ginagawa nyo ngayon, meron po bang A ano mga institutions, ano po mga, sino po mga researchers ang, you know, Ay. doing this uh, this work yes. to different kinds of, or different types of uh, trees, yung endemic na sinasabi uh -oh. nga ni Carl. Uh -oh. uh, actually po, we are just one. one. Uh, SLSU is just one nationwide po na meron pong clonal facility. Uh, we are, I think, about 20 SUCs nationwide all the way mm -hmm. from Luzon to Mindanao. So you can search po dun sa website ng DNRERDB yung mga uh, state universities and colleges that are doing this clonal propagation. And uh, DNR is also, has also a clonal facility uh, in uh, dyan po sa Los Baños. Uh, mm -hmm. Meron din po dito sa Quezon, dito po sa uh, QPL sa may Atimonan o pagbilaw ba yun. And then nearby, es, taga saan kaya si sir? <laughs> so <laughs> that I can tell him kung anong SUC po yun. Uh, madami po, you can, um, siguro you can personally message me if uh, you, kung saan po kayo, then I can refer you po to that faculty, faculty who is working yeah. also on clonal propagation. Specific din po dun sa area, specific din po dun sa mga three species na nagtatrive dun sa area. Yeah. Yun. Okay. So, uh, paki-PM na lang. Message okay. na lang, uh, Carl. So, a question ni Roberto Cañete. Hi po. Paano po kayo mag-sterilize ng rooting medium? I, I guess marami mga, mga style po yan. No? Pero for your clonal propagation, ano pong ginagawa? Madami pong paraan. Una po, eh, pwede nating ibilad sa araw, uh, half day. Kung maganda po yung ating uh, uh, araw, ay di pwede po natin siyang ibilad half day. Mm -hmm. uh, tapos, uh, ganun din, yung para ibabalibaliktad mo, para po ma, o yung even yung, ano niya, uh, yung sterilization niya. Kung hindi naman po available si sunlight, you can also do yung heating na sinasabi. Uh, sa amin, nilalagay namin sa isang napakalaking kawa. Niluluto. Tapos, minimix po namin din yung, para kami mga witch. So, yun wala lang mantika. <laughs> wala lang po mantika. Uh, Doon po namin nililuto, uh, usually mga 3 hours o 1 to 3 hours. Pero hindi po yun yung sobrang ma yung naglalagablab na apoy. Ano po, yung tamang init lang po. Tapos, uh, that's it. Pwede na po natin siyang gawing me uh, routine media after. Alright, so from Marilyn Tumala, ang question niya, is there a government agency in the Philippines uh, which can assist small-scale tree farmers uh, in identifying trees because you know her brother said yung trees daw na binili nila from a supplier from a Quezon, from Quezon I don't know if it's a city or province uh -huh. has uh, the wrong name tagging or probably it's uh, mali yung tag mm -hmm. uh, baka lang nagkamali or uh, yun pero ano yung pinaka the best for you to you know for them 
to seek out kung kailan nila magpa-identify ng trees. Yes. Yes, opo. Uh, ma'am, if uh, you cannot uh, come uh, face to face po sa Southern Luzon State University or in DNR agencies, uh, you can take pictures of that uh, species and then you can post po in the Philippine Native Tree Enthusiast uh, Facebook page. I am also a member of that uh, uh, group. Mm -hmm. uh, Doon po maraming makakatulong po sa atin para po correctly ma-identify po natin yung uh, inyo pong tree species na nabili. Alright. And incidentally, Ma'am Marlene, sa Museum of Natural History, kung saan po tayo <laughs> yung host ng webinar, meron po kaming service yung biological specimen ah, yes. identification. Meron po kami. No? Uh, ang kakaiba lang po sa amin, meron po kaming certification and then it's a paid service. So, pero if you would like na you know, magpa-refer lang kayo kasi mga, mga enthusiast sa mga websites, uh, pwede naman po. Okay, uh, from Tita Ami Luna. Congrats daw, Kat. Most of the stock plants you collected are slow-growing species and are considered, and some considered premium species like mulave and malabayas, malabayabas. And uh, nag-attempt ka na ba ng fast-growing native species na may potential for ITP plantation establishment? Uh, at present po, yung kalumpit, yun yung isa lang namin na uh, na-propagate pa. But then, uh, we were not yet able to monitor this uh, in the field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kalumpit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yun daw, Tita Ami. From Emmanuel Alfred Villamin ulit. Um, I don't know kung na-present yun na ito. Pero may, ang tanong niya is, uh, may successful tissue culture native trees na po ba kayo na na-establish? At present po, wala pa. Nahihirapan po kami. Uh, mm -hmm. Siguro po gawa din ng uh, nature nung, nung puno. Katulad po ng Almasiga, siya po ay madagta. Uh, ang hirap din po niyang gawin. I'm not sure if uh, ERDB was already able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Pakicheck na lang. Pero ang, ting ang alam ko, wala pa din. Ang... ang uh, dinadevelop pa lang po nila is yung media kung saan ay hindi po aatakihin siya ng ano ng fungal o uh, ng fungal infection yung media kung saan patutubuin po yung explants um, for native trees sa case po namin ha sa SLSU ay unsuccessful pa po kami uh, we would want to do more uh, research on that and also we need funding <laughs> shout out po tayo dyan for funding yes okay. <laughs> Uh, question from Reynante Bacalanco. Have you used um, different tissue culture medium in the propagation of this uh, of your species? Uh -oh. MS medium po ba mas efficient ba siya? Uh, yung MS people? medium po kasi yun yung common at saka yun din yung readily available in the market. So yun pa lang yung nagagamit namin. Mm. Okay, so follow-up question yata to ni... Dr. Niem, can you cite other problems you have encountered with the clonal propagation other than the faster disease transmission? How do you address them? Um, I think uh, I have to reveal this. Hmm. At the initial stage, yung first year of clonal propagation, we were, su we were not successful. Hindi po kami nakakapagpaugat, namamatay po siya lahat. Basta lahat na yung hindi mo talaga siya, hindi mo maintindihan kung tutubo ba siya o hindi. But then, kailangan talaga ay yung skill, tapos matutunan mo yung, uh, mapag-aralan mo yung karakteristik talaga ng puno. Kung kailan mo din kukolektahin yung stem cuttings, kasi dapat umaga, may mga ganun po eh, umaga, tapos mayroong certain length, um, may certain age mula dun sa flashing ng stem cuttings. So, Yun lahat, uh, that uh, was our, I think, uh, major na mga obstacles aside po dun sa mga nabanggit na mga pest and disease. Kasi madali na pong i-manage para sa amin yun eh. Uh, but then yung initial, yung magsa-start ka talaga, I think that is uh, the most difficult part. So kahit na ako po ay nag-training at na-train ko po yung mga tao ko, we still uh, requested the assistance of uh, ERDB for another retraining, parang refresher course for like, I think after two years, ganun, tinulungan nila kami ulit. And then 
that paved the the way. Oh. Yes. Of course, dapat skilled talaga yung workers nyo eh. Yes, sa, yes. Sa At talaga. dapat ma-maintain din po yung staff. Hindi pwedeng palit-palit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. mm-hmm. So from Albert Pinion, um, question is, aside from stem straightness, what particular physical traits of the mother trees you were uh, you were uh, you were applied during plus tree selection po so siguro uh, uh, let me ano siguro aside from st- uh, stem straightness ano pa ba daw yung physical traits ng mother trees na uh, ginamit nyo uh, for selection of your plus trees are there any specific parameters uh, you used say for batikuling or kasaw-kasaw Tama ba yun? Mm-hmm. Arad Masiga? Uh, in-apply lang din po namin yung mga uh, criteria doon sa DAO 2010. So, nandun yung forking. So, syempre po, pagka medyo humahati na po yung trunk, nagiging dalwa, tatlo, ganun. Doon pa lang sa, uh, what do you call this, uh, merchantable na trunk niya, ay ini-skip na po namin yung puno. Okay? So, dapat hindi rin po leaning, mga ganun. Mm-hmm. Tapos uh, lahat po yung ano yung binigay ng DAO 2010. Yun po yung mga criteria na ginamit namin. Tapos hindi lang po ako yung nagse-select, hindi lang po ako yung nagi-grade. Um uh, marami po kami sa team para po i titingnan namin uh what do you call this? I average namin kung ano ba talaga yung score nung puno na yon. So it is also composed really of a team, not just an individual in selecting these uh trees. So, nandiyan po yung branch angle, yung circularity, yung thickness ng mga branches. Uh, may grading din po kami doon. Tapos kung siya ba ay self-pruning o hindi. Mm-hmm. Ano, yan po. Para pala kung ano, no? Miss Universe pageant din yan. Opo, Chang-Chi. para po siyang, para din po yung ano, para kang lalaki na <laughs> naghahanap ng maliligawang babae. Tapos kin- uh, ina-assess mo yung uh, phenotypic characteristics yeah. niya. May yes, din yun para po ano. maging maganda yung offspring. Sa auction sa animal science, ganun din yun eh. May, uh, may yeah. team din na tumitingin talaga siya. Alright, uh, sige, let's... Uh, ito may... I think this is a, a remark by Bernardo Cabano. Goling Goling is one of the pests of Dulitan. And it eats the young bark of the tree. Okay, so for your FI lang po yan. And from Reynante Bakalangko, uh, do you also do disease indexing for explants? Not yet, po. Hmm. What, what do you mean, explants? Oh, for okay. for explants, disease indexing. Ah, yes, of course, opo. All right. Okay. From Windel Jan Tabamo, if ever po na walang available na river sand, ano pa kaya pwedeng pamalit? Um, I, I think you can also use uh, kung may choir dust, pwede po. Mm-hmm. Kung pwede rin po yung buhangin na ginagamit natin na aside, iba kasi yung buhangin na ginagamit sa construction, iba din po yung oh, buhangin na pang ano. Opo. Uh, sa case namin noon, nag-try kami mag-propagate garden soil, in-sterilize namin. Nag-uugat din po siya. Mm-hmm. Pwede. Pero check lang po natin yung kung baka mamaya masyadong clay. So, dapat medyo uh, coarse. Uh, kailangan ay maganda yung drainage ng, ng lupa. Yun yung importante kasi yung aeration at yung drainage oh, para po magkaroon po ng ugat. Maganda yung roots niya. Mm-mm. So, from Maria Lizel Castro, I think uh, LGU, LGU official by ito or representative. Kasi ang tanong niya, ma'am, maaari po ba kayo mag-extend ng technical assistance sa LGU <laughs> para sa clonal propagation uh, kung sakali po na mag-establish kami ng clonal nursery. Yes po. San ka, san LGU kaya po si Ma'am? Opo. So yes po daw Ma'am. So yes, kung po. ano, can, usapin niyo na lang po si Ma'am Kat. Opo. Okay. Uh, At tagkawayan. 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 Kaya lang din pala. <laughs> yes Ma'am. <laughs> of course Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Please send us <laughs> ano uh, communication. Basta po uh, nandiyan po ang aming mga kasamahan po sa forestry and, and vice side department to assist you, including me. Mm. Okay? So from Edson Kapara, uh, ask lang niya kung saan seedlings po kami 
makakamura <laughs> sa clone seedlings <laughs> or direct seedling? Uh, Siyempre po, mas mura po yung mga galing po sa seeds hmm. kasi wala na pong ibang uh, uh, masyadong uh, interventions na ginawa po sa kanya. Okay. Mas, Siyempre po, uh, mas mahal yung clone because we used uh, putting hormones. Uh, hmm. Iba po yung ating mga ginagawa na na magko-contribute po doon sa additional cost po niya. Uh, we were yun. able to compute the the cost of that and yung cost lang hanggang nursery doon sa rooting bed lang is ano eh 19 20 pesos na siya hanggang 20 pesos. Mm-hmm. So papaano pa kapag uh, nasa recovery hanggang hardening. So that's why we are selling clones in SLSU at uh, 50 pesos to hanggang 100 I think. Mm-hmm. Mahal pa. Pero of course, kapag mas marami yung network ng gumagawa ng mga yes. clonal nurseries na ito, eh, bumura. Plus, uh-huh. I think, uh, iba naman siguro yung target na itong, ano, ng, yes. ng program na ito. Hindi okay, siya for okay. general for the plantation. Siguro for mm-hmm. establishing... In the case of sir ng, ano, ng LGU, uh, mm-hmm. na-subsidize po siya. Mas right. lower yung cost na binigay sa kanila. Mm-hmm. So from Jonalyn Dagupen, were you able to observe the same performance of propagules uh, under the mist and non-mist conditions? Pantay lang kaya sila? O mayroon mas magaling ba ang, mas maganda ba sa mist conditions? Uh, yes. If you uh, would like to target yung mas marami kang produce, syempre po, mas okay na misting po siya. Yun po kasi yung parang uh, pinakang uh, objective ng clonal propagation is to mass produce mm-hmm. at a very short uh, period of time. As compared to non-mist, kasi sa isang maliit na chamber, parang wala pa yatang 20 ang kasya dun sa loob. Mm-hmm. Uh, yun kasi yung parang uh, design din ng ERDB para tumubo talaga at magkaugat po yung mga, yung mga, po, yung mga stem cuttings. So, syempre, mas okay pa rin po yung, yung mist. Yes. Pero, if we are just uh, having like uh, yung parang backyard or small time lang, then to go for non-mist. Non yes. mm-hmm. Question from Milton Dulay. As far as you know po, how effective, how effective are the clone tree species compared to trees produced from seeds? Uh, when it comes to controlling soil erosion or landslides and mm, use for windbreaks. Meron na, yeah. meron na ba kayo clone tree species na products at ginamit yun na for these, uh, these for purposes? For windbreak or mm. soil erosion, uh, we have not yet done that. But we hope we can do it in the future. Uh, but uh, in the case of, uh, sige, I will, ano na lang, lagi pa ite, ano, at doon po kami talaga nagkaroon ng, ng mga outplants. Uh, for the past years naman, wala pang nabuwal. Uh, okay din. Nagtanim din kasi sila ng galing sa seeds, ng galing sa wildlings at saka yung clones. Uh, parehong-pareho lang din po naman yung naging ano niya, uh, performance. Mm-mm. Marami din factors yun para mabuwal, di ba? So, yes. Opo. So, hindi mo rin siya, pwede siyang sabihin na Uh-oh. i-attribute mo lang yung nangyari dahil clone yes. siya at siya ay uh, yung Opo. Uh, Kailangan ng so mahabang seeds. pag-aaral oh. for that. <laughs> All right. I think um, they have uh, this kind of uh, observations yata no? doon sa mga ITPs na sa Mindanao. But they are, I think hindi ito native, mga exotic species po. Mm, I see. Mm-hmm. So from ah, jumbled characters, <laughs> ano pong <laughs> species ng kahoy ang pinakamagandang gamitin for clonal seedling propagation? Any three Any. species, yes. And uh, I always say we propagate those that are threatened, or yung mga rare na natin na three species. Okay. Okay. Comment from email da pi Sarmiano, ah uh, Sarmiento, ah, si uh, relating to the correct identification ng native plants. No? So does SLSU offer taxonomy as a, a major program or any school for that matter? Yes, po. It is included in our BS Forestry curriculum and we are uh, proud to say that we have here forester Dennis Pulan. Oy, okay, Dennis. Yeah. Oh, meron din po sa marami po mga ano, BS Forestry schools ang nag-o-offer ng taxonomy, okay. no? Uh, major part po 'yan ng, ng 
curriculum. Pero when you say as a major program, uh, I think hindi yata. No? Pero of course, ang taxonomy, systematics is a big part ng BS Forestry uh, curriculum ng mga HEI sa Pilipinas. So, from Chris Lane Raquel, uh, mamkat ilan na po ang species ang ginagamit ng SLSU ngayon sa clonal nursery as per presented by the DNR ERDB. Lima lang po ba ang listed? No po. We have, uh, from our hedge garden, we have 20, mm. uh, more than 20 species. And then uh, in our report in 2019, I think we have 50 species, 50 plus. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, from John Calvin Clarete, Calvin, uh, ask how involved are the local communities in propagating planting, monitoring, and as well as protecting these species uh, which you have mentioned? Uh, yes. So in the case po ng Paite, we started it as sa SEPA muna, as IEC. Mm -hmm. Inform muna namin kung kilala ba nila ang, or tinanong namin kung kilala nila yung mga yung batikuling, yung mga pinag-uusapan namin puno, mga ganun. We start from uh, informing, educating them, and then uh, we also uh, let them identify nasaan po ang mga batikuling sa inyong lugar, mga ganon. Tapos po, uh, tinuruan namin sila kung paano uh, magpropagate doon po sa kanilang lugar mismo. Nag-train po sila dito sa SLSU and at the same time doon din po sa kanilang lugar. Uh, ngayon po, uh, meron na silang nursery, meron na ding nursery staff. Meron na din silang forest ranger na nagbabantay doon sa kanilang tree farm para po uh, hindi siya uh, putulin kasi akala po noong una yun ay uh, kape. Mm -hmm. Akala nila ay kape, pinutol yung mga yung ibang mga itinanim just ko <laughs> sayang na sayang yung 3 year old uh, batikulin. So kailangan po talaga um, hindi lang din uh, yung parang mature na mga tao ang involved Dapat, ano siya eh, holistic talaga. Kasama yung kabataan. Nandyan din yung mga teachers. Nandyan yung local government unit. Nandyan din yung mga parents. Ganun. So sila yung mga kasama namin dito sa, uh, ginawa namin dito sa LGU po ng Paite. Ngayon po, meron na din ginagawa ang SLSU. Uh, yung pag-establish naman ng Green Wall. Uh, dito din po sa Quezon. Mm -hmm. So maganda din po yung ginagawa ngayon for that. Okay, uh, related to that, yung uh, comment lang ni, ni Ariel, uh, maganda din pong ma-introduce sa community itong, yes. you know, yung technology na ito para makatulong na rin sila for conserving yung ating mga native mm -hmm. species. And um, again, uh, mayroon pong comment si dito si, si Jen. Uh, you can email Prof. Engay Gutierrez at kegutierrez at up.edu.ph should you have uh, further questions and clarifications. And uh, I think this would be probably the last questions from Luther Kalam. Uh, pwede po bang i-clone yung lapinsan or agarwood, yung Philippine agarwood? Uh, kasi malaking tulong yun para sa ating ekonomi. Parang nakita ko yata yun, ang mahal-mahal doon. Oh, po. <laughs> huh. Yes po. Wow, that's good po kung kayo pa interested sa agarwood. Actually, meron din po kaming uh, niluluto na proposal tungkol po dyan at uh, nag identify po muna kami ng mga uh, agarwood uh, tree species po dito sa amin. So I think meron kaming dalbergia riata dito at saka uh, gonistylus. Yun. Mm -hmm. So ma maganda po, nahanapin niyo po kung nasaan po ang mga mother trees niyan. I-locate niyo po. Okay. So I guess wala na pong pahabol na question. So with that, maraming salamat po, uh, Ma'am Kat, for a very, very uh, informative no, presentation. And uh, thank you very much dito sa ating more than 200, part 200 participants sa uh, so first ever <laughs> Biodiversity <laughs> Seminar this 2022. Sorry, medyo mabagal po kami ngayon, unlike last year. Tuloy-tuloy lang po kami. Uh, from Ruby Ann Obinado, hello po. Can we have a copy of the recording and presentation? Uh, the recording, we will be uploading it to our YouTube channel. So, abangan nyo na lang po. Magpapadala na lang po kami ng email uh, para ma-access nyo po. And uh, nag-post po kanina ng link dun sa ano, kaso natambakan na ng mga comments. I'll, just, I'll be posting again the link to our 
um, evaluation form, please uh, answer that. And uh, while you're doing so, let me just share my, my screen. And uh, let us uh, award the certificate of appreciation to our resource person, Ma'am Kat. And I read certificate of appreciation is awarded to Katrina G. Engay Gutierrez for serving as resource person during the UPLB Museum of Natural History Biodiversity Seminar on Clonal Forestry and production of quality planting materials for sustainable forest management. Held today, March 2, 2022, from 2 to 3.30 p.m. via Zoom. And it's signed by our director, Dr. Maria P. Pileo. So a warm, big round of applause to Mam Kat Gutierrez. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So we invite you to go. Uh, sa, if you want to learn more about our, our organization, the UPLB Museum of Natural History, please visit our website. It's at mnh.uplb.edu.ph or you could write us at uh, mnh.uplb.up.edu.ph. Marami po kami social media accounts. Uh, like, follow, subscribe sa Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Just use the handle UPLB Museum. And check out our pages at uh, Wikipedia and TripAdvisor. Just search for UPLB Museum of Natural History. So with that, uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And uh, please uh, check out for our next announcement. I probably we would have another uh, webinar by end of March. Uh, stay tuned sa aming mga social media channels for the announcement. So with that, maraming salamat po. Stay safe po.